Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni. Joined once again is Shay Dixon, decked out in the purple today on the bye week. How you doing, the Shay? Roback gear. As uh, on the recruiting pod, new sponsor, Billy had some nice Roback gear in. Yes, yeah. Shout out Roback, uh, one of one of our sponsors. Um, yeah, it's been a busy week already, and it's only Tuesday of the bye week on the Bengal Tiger on three. Uh, basketball got a commitment. Uh, the Bengal Tiger got commitments. I mean, it's, two commitments. It's been rolling. Uh, yeah. It, for those that didn't listen to the recruiting podcast with Billy and I yesterday, Jared, yeah, y'all, y'all covered uh, it well over yeah, there. Jared Roser and Julie Bodwin have joined the Bengal Tiger. Uh, you know him from working at the Times Picayune, NOLA.com, Rivals. Obviously, Jared's been big in the Louisiana prep scene with Louisiana versus all y'all and his coverage across the past decade plus. So uh, big day of new signups, Maddie B. Um, we do have the promo and you can see it if you go to the website on the Bengal Tiger, but yep. uh, the promo code is GO, G-E-A-U-X, and that will get you uh, an annual membership for less than five bucks a month. So as I told Billy, normally you and I, when we talk about deals, it's like, all right, don't spend that cup of coffee, 10 bucks for five bucks. You're not getting anything from Starbucks. So you're getting a deal for even less than that. A Circle K cup of coffee is is what we're giving uh, giving away here, Maddie B. But get you onto the Bengal Tiger. Come celebrate seeing those two join. And uh, as I said yesterday, honestly, between the message board and then being able to read, <clears throat> if you just want to be up to date, Maddie B on on three, or be up to date on teams, college football teams, on three's got all of the major sites from where they were in the rivals days to scout days to 24 yep. seven. They're all here. Florida state, go to war chant and just sit around <laughs> the message board and read. I promise you, you will feel so much better about LSU football uh, yes. and all that's it's included ever. All of that you get for less than five bucks a month. It was yeah. uh, one of my favorite pastimes at Maddie B is when you deal with a board that, you know, has ups and downs is going to watch somebody else melt. Yes. Yeah, just, just watch the fire burn down um over there and nobody's yeah. melting as bad as florida state fans this no, year no no especially not after that smu game i mean it just continues it continues um well we got a mailbag pod today um uh, we're gonna release this on wednesday morning uh asked yesterday for the um at 7 30 so let the record show i did it on time this time around but uh asked for mailbag questions it's got about 20 25 in here so we can just roll through them it's a bye week so i don't, honestly haven't looked at these so i don't know where they're gonna go i haven't vetted them at all all right you ready let's kick it yep. off should i say we're gonna go under an hour yeah do it all right i'll keep this under an hour everybody um as i always promise and never deliver on but let's see if today is the day um go tigers and all of these are user submitted on the board so like i yes. said if you're a member of the bengal tiger you can ask a question every week and we'll answer it uh and we answer these daily on the board but we'll go more in depth yeah. on the podcast uh go tigers 107 is the defense actually better without harold perkins this is probably this is i'm, I'm glad this is the first question because i knew somebody yeah. was going to ask it we just don't know how to use him effectively and pin plus the weak brothers are actually more effective question mark it, I guess he was asking that, not a statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's not knowing how to use him effectively, if it's as much as he's a bit of a tweener to a point. And as for the Weeks brothers, we only got to see West Weeks play four snaps uh, against South Alabama. But Witt, who, look, at on three, we had him as a four-star. I think we might have had him as a top 100 prospect I think out so. of high school. Uh, but... Yes, uh, top 10 linebacker in the country. So we already knew Witt was going to be good. He flashed it last year. He settled in. So Witt and Greg Penn, now that you're playing this 4-2-5, in that game, yeah, sure, I guess you were better without him. It's very – I'm hard-pressed. You can say whatever you'd like to think that this team is better for the long haul without Harold Perkins. Yeah, I agree. I, I think – yeah, I, if they had Perkins in that game against South Alabama, I don't think anything changes. I don't think they look significantly worse or better. Uh, I, the thing is, is Perkins' absence or him being on the field does not affect Whit Weeks and Greg Penn's play at the inside linebacker position. They were going to be there regardless. The only thing that changes is that Sam linebacker spot turns into a star with Major Burns, and 
you know, major maybe can make some plays here and there. He's, you know, inconsistent, we know. But I just think having Harold Perkins on the field instead of Major Burns, or instead of that star position, I should say, is is going to help, would have helped them in the long term uh, because LSU's questions are in the secondary. They're the defensive backs, and now you have to go even further down the depth chart to get five of them on the field instead of four. And Harold is so versatile. I, I think he would have held up pretty, pretty well um, against the different offenses that they face and the different mobile quarterbacks that they face. And so uh, I think long-term the defense is not better without Harold Perkins. I don't think he was better against South Alabama without him. And I think, um, you know, we're going to need to see the secondary really step up in order for that statement to, to be true of, of them being better without him. And here's the reality too. Perkins not being there and means directly means that you're playing this four two five far more often than maybe you were going to with him there. Because if you have Perkins, you're playing Perkins weeks and pin at one time in that four, three look translation Perkins comes off means major burns comes on. He's yeah. the one guy who has sort of struggled obviously across parts of last year, this year, I don't think that that trade-off is one that, yeah, is like if the secondary possible, was right I, again, if they if they had a really strong and I'm not secondary. knocking major burns, I'm just saying you were talking about a Harold Perkins five star taking him off, yeah, and the person who's now on the field is the one person who fans say is a liability in spots, yeah, yeah. and well, you also lose the versatility of being able to, I mean, even have that option of having Harold Perkins on the field. Now you you don't. You have to roll a four two five. I don't think or they're going to. What run. happens if Greg Penn gets hurt or Whit Weeks get Whit gets yeah. hurt? Yeah, certainly wish you had Harold. So yeah, no, so, I don't uh, think they're better. I think the answer to that question really, and not even to make it about anybody like Major Burns or anyone else, is thank goodness they have Whit Weeks. Yes, because now they can play Weeks and Penn, and it doesn't look there's no fall off at middle linebacker. In fact, those two are better players at that position than Perkins is. Perkins yeah. is trying to learn that position. Yeah. Um, they are naturals at that position. But yes, I, I understand the 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 hope that LSU fans have after one game of shutting down South Alabama that maybe this defense will somehow be better without Perkins. I just don't think it's true. Um next question, Texan Tiger two, how would you defend Trey Harris with our DBs? Trey Harris is Ole Miss's uh top wide receiver, uh Como native. This is why you always take Louisiana receivers, in my opinion. You've heard me say it uh 50 billion times, but uh also Malik uh, neighbors quarterback in high school. But uh you pointed out he's got more than catches than the next three guys combined. You got two weeks to figure this out. LSU's on by, but Maddie B, quick reaction to that question. How do you stop Ole Miss's best player? Well, Kentucky did a really good job against Caden Prescore and their tight end. Um, and I'm going to go back and watch that game with, with more depth. I was kind of, you know, watching it on and off. Um, I was watching a few games on that that day. Regardless, um, Trey Harris goes 11 catches, 176 yards, one touchdown. Uh, we know how good of a player he is. Jackson Dart obviously loves throwing to him. I mean, 11 of his 18 completed passes went to Trey Harris. I when you look at this matchup on paper, which is all I can do right now, I haven't written anything or dove too deep into it, but when you look at the matchup on paper, it is definitely going to be LSU second day. That's going to be tested consistently. Um, we know Lane Kiffin can throw different eye candy at you. We know he can u- utilize different receivers uh, across the field. And Trey Harris is going to be a big part of that. Caden Priestcorn is going to be a big part of that. Like they're going to have guys um, on the perimeter that are going to, threaten LSU's defensive backs. How would I defend Trey Harris? I don't think I would go crazy and like bracket him or anything like that. Maybe shade a safety over the top, but at the end of the day, they're going to need safeties and linebackers in the box a lot to also stop the run and Jackson Dart can run the ball as well. So it, it's a complicated answer. Um, I'll have more for that next week, but at, at this moment, I think you're just going to have to have Ashton Stamps and, whether it's JK or Zai or PJ, uh, be competitive and try to hold their own. I look back at the track meet from a year ago. Uh, Quinchon Judkins carried the ball 30 something times for 177 yards in that game. Um, he's not on their team anymore. Uh, Trey Harris had eight catches for 153 and one. He led the team. That's the topic of our conversation here. 
Uh, Jordan Watkins, not there. Uh, obviously, he's not playing this year uh, for them. Dayton Wade uh, was on that team. He hasn't isn't playing for Ole Miss this year. Uh, I should say that. Yeah, they they're added a few. Receivers. Yeah, the, these guys are. Uh, their next is Caden Lee, um, who did not play in that game uh, a year ago. You mentioned uh, Caden Prescorn, uh, tight end. But at receiver, their top three receivers or four receivers, only Beyondre Harris, only Jordan Watkins played in that game a year ago. But he had five for 103 and one, and he's got five for 139 and two so far this year. So not gaudy numbers, but those two guys, I think Trey Harris and a sneaky kind of eye on Jordan Watkins because he's played in this game and put up a ton of numbers last year. As for Trey Harris, I'm putting Zy Alexander on him and just hoping for the best. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you can sell out to stop one player on a Lane Kiffin offense because they are going to be very balanced and they're going to attack you with the running back and the quarterback run game and a lot of, and the tight end and all that stuff. So um, the one thing I was wondering is the health of Juice Wells at receiver for them um, in this game and moving forward. And he's not the dog, right? That, and that's not that other Juice. Yeah, he's not the dog. He's not the dog. Not, no. um, he's played. He's played in every game. Or right, well, he against Kentucky he had yeah. zero reception. Okay, yeah, well, and all the all the stuff this week is about Juice Wells being crucial uh, for Ole Miss to beat South Carolina. So yeah, so I've. I was I, I want to see him against South Carolina because he going into the year he was supposed to be a big part of their offense as well. Yeah, fourteen for two seventy four, four touchdowns though. So they've played five he's games, four so he's almost a touchdown a game. Yeah, good player. So um, player I player. think that on a bye week, LSU fans will be tuned into this Ole Miss South Carolina game because it's in Columbia. You get to watch an environment that you played in. You know what you're up against. It seems like that yeah. they might have their starting quarterback back in Sellers. And how does Ole Miss handle it compared to how LSU handled it? I'm not in love with, you know, that whole game, but I do think that will at least show us something, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. It's going to be every LSU fan will be watching that and, and including us. And we, everybody will take away some sort of concrete evidence from it, even if, you know, the matchup is a little different there. South Carolina's defense is obviously elite and, you know, we'll have to see how, how it plays out. Uh, Gochella uh, asked two parter uh, who's on the Mount Rushmore of LSU football and build your perfect all time DB secondary. Gosh, this would take forever for me to think of. Uh, but you have to have your Heisman winners. So he mentioned three of them uh, Daniels, Burrow, and Billy Cannon. And then he has Tyron Matthew. I can't argue with that list. No. Because you can, there's I, a, if you have to include three Heisman winners, there's a million names that. There's at least 20 guys, 30, probably 30 over the years that Kevin Fox. The, I mean, if you keep going back to the 70s and 80s and 90s and even early 2000s, all those great teams, the Patrick Petersons, uh, there's so many. Josh Reed, Malik Neighbors, who now holds the reception record and receiving record at LSU. I, I just I have to put Tyra in there. Yeah. I, I have He's no not going to have the all-time stats that everyone else did because he only played a short amount, but his impact was felt. Yeah, I think you go with a Tyron Matthew. I mean, Leonard Fournette obviously had the, the 2,000-yard season basically as a, as a sophomore in 2015. So um, that's another. There's a lot of great players. Uh, I think you're if we're going off the principle that the three Heisman winners have to be there, which is a very sound principle, then yeah, that would be my four as well. Um, uh, the next question is about, uh, or what he asked was, uh, who would be our all time DBU? So I guess pick, uh, uh, Andy said a nickel. So gosh, we get five choices here. Go ahead. Um, I can, I guess, I mean, I can, I can only speak to the modern, like I can't go to Jerry Stovall and Casanova and guys who certainly probably belong on this list because that is predates my watching of LSU football like I did from 2000 on. So I'll stick to what I call the modern era. Mm -hmm. I'll go PP seven as a corner. I'll go Matthew at nickel. I'll go. I'll go Corey Webster at the other corner with Patrick Peterson. And then I'll, yeah, cause he was saving years. Yeah. So that counts. Mm -hmm. Um, Safety. Ooh. 
He oh, this is tough. I mean, the Eric Reed, Jamal Adams, mm -hmm. uh, Grant Delpit crowd would all be in there. I mean, you've got some Thorpe Award winners. You've got uh, – that's tough. I don't know. Th that grouping of guys uh, between Jamal, Delpit, and – and obviously Eric Reed. Eric Reed just had so many big plays. So I'll yeah. I'll throw Chad Jones in that mix because then I get his return skills. So I could God, that's a good one. I don't I like know. That'll like be it. my answer though. Um uh, Miss Let Alarm. And if you're watching on YouTube, chime in there. I want I want to see some people's Mount Rushmore's and then their all time DBU. Yeah. Uh Miss Let Alarm 92. How do you feel about a mod bro and Dominic McKinley with a limited sample size? Uh it is limited. So Ahmad Rowe and Dominic McKinley are two freshmen. Uh, both both of them are true freshmen. Uh, defensive tackles, Matty B. Um, I don't have the season snap count. Do you have? I was just snap count I was just up? about to pull that up. Give pull me that up. one second. Screenshot that and text it to me while we're on this too, so that I can think more about this. I think well, McKinley was out because he had the turf toe injury. He mm -hmm. played 17 snaps against South Alabama. Ahmad bro started. He played 31. Bro is at 125 snaps and um, Dom is at 35 snaps. I'm going to guess that bro has a pretty solid run defense PFF grade. Bro... Yes, his yes, his rush yes, much better than his passing grade. Yeah, that's. I think that that's the kind of player he is. He put on thirty pounds. I think he is strong enough, smart enough, well coached at Ruston, coached by Kyle Williams, a legend, you know, a Hall of Fame type guy. Uh, that yes, I think that he's so well coached that he knows how to get off blocks and reads things well. I think he's good in the run game. I don't think he's expected to be that penetrator. He's going to rack up the sack. So. That's what I like about him. I have, I think the sample size is too small for me with McKinley yet. I think he's still coming along. But if Bo Davis is developing the rest of these guys, like he has, or McKinley, like he has the rest of these guys, then I have high hopes for Don McKinley. Yeah, I, I think McKinley is always is still the player in this room with the highest ceiling. Uh, I that does not change for me. Watching him throughout fall, um, seeing him in the UCLA game. I think McKinley is certainly the highest ceiling player here, and he has taken really – he's been better in these two games that he's been available than I even thought considering he would miss the first, you know, three games of the season. So I'm I'm very, very bullish on Dominic McKinley long-term, and, you know, maybe by the second half of the season he can continue to work his way into maybe the 20 – 15 to 20 snaps per game range. So, yeah, I, I like, I like a, both of them. That'd be a good chunk. Um Yeah of snaps uh but yeah look maybe both of them to get some additional work in the bye week and we'll see how much they get involved next week but uh you got to shout out a lot of those guys the like the transfer Suggs has played well in limited snaps geo Piaz has played really well coming out of wisconsin uh with more snaps than those guys uh but good to see a mod bro and don mckinley out there certainly uh thoughts on cj daniels so far maddie b you and i talked about this the other day it surprised me when he's got more he's played more snaps at receiver than anyone on the team including mm -hmm. Kyron Lacey I then did ask a, a, a source about that and they said he's by far he's so trustworthy he always knows where to be he blocks well and he runs all of his routes correctly I just think that he doesn't have that same top gear top gear that makes you an Aaron Anderson a and I don't want to go into the Malik and Brian George Thomas. Jefferson and Chase crowd, but I'm just saying like so often you see those guys, Lacey make those plays where at South Alabama, he got tripped up a few times and lost his balance and fell. And that's a play where we just took for granted that guys like Brian Thomas just shake it off and keep their balance and run for a touchdown. So yeah. I just want to see CJ turn that corner maybe. Yeah, I, we talked about it. If, I think we had a question last mailbag. It was like, who would Chris Hilton take snaps from? And it wasn't even in a um, negative sense towards C.J. Daniels, really. It was more so of C.J.'s played so many snaps. And Hilton, I mean, because you're not taking Aaron Anderson and Kyron Lacey off the field, you're going to, like, Daniels is going to be the one that snaps would dip in theory. So this will be our first real look at that against um, Ole Miss is – 
if Hilton gets, I don't know, 30 snaps, 25, 30 snaps, I mean, and then what does CJ's, you know, splits look like in that regard? So, because he does, he plays, a, he's playing 60 snaps a game and he's got what, three, four receptions per game on average, somewhere around there. Steady. Yeah, no, he's been incredibly steady. He's been incredibly steady, uh, you know, getting those three or four receptions for about 40 to 50 yards, which is good. But this offense, as I've talked about before, does need to be a little bit more explosive in SEC plays. So you you hope, you know, you can kind of find ways to do that. Iowa City Tiger fan said, by week question, who lost more money on Friday night in Vegas? Oh, this is for me. Uh, you, me, Jackie Daytona, or Emily. I hung out with that uh, crew of – what a crew uh, of suspects that certainly were being followed by the Vegas cameras the whole time. Um, Emily would be last because she, she sits on the roulette electronic and just plays it. Oh, that's the way to, to where like, she could play all night long and lose $4 yeah. <laughs> or win 10 and just put it on a bunch of different there. numbers. And then just, yeah, yeah like, she's got a yeah, even the strategy to just last red, forever. Everything. Um, I will go Jackie Daytona because I think I made him buy most of our drinks. So beyond gambling, I think he lost most of the money by buying everybody drinks. So Jackie Daytona is the winner on that one. Shout out, Jack. Uh, good question though. Good question. Um, Tiger fan 11, who's LSU looking to bring in at tackle, uh, next year, 2025. So if we're presuming they lose their two starting tackles, I think the portal is obviously something they'll look at, um, without a doubt. You don't know what's going to be in the portal. Uh, you don't know what interest they'll have in you, all of that. So uh, I will offer you up my take. I think that the left tackle would be Tyree Adams and the right tackle would be Weston Davis. I think left tackle, they Tyree, love Tyree Adams. Adams. No, Tyree Adams is going to start next year for sure, 100%. The Weston Davis point is interesting. I've, we haven't seen him in a game setting, so we don't know. Correct. But And he's a true freshman right now. Watching him throughout practice and knowing that he didn't have spring ball to work through um, this year, fall camp was definitely a lot for him. Um, and Brad Davis let him know constantly. Um, try, stayed on him the entire time. Um, so it's going to take time, I think, with Weston. We knew that coming in with Weston, though. We Even with him being a five-star and on three, you know, we were like, this isn't a day one starter, I don't think. This was not a Will Campbell situation. Um but I do think he has incredibly high upside. And so maybe he does get it. I do definitely think they need to bring in somebody to at least compete with him. Like, I don't think this can be a situation where, all right, well, Adams and Davis, like in December are, or January are like, all right, those are our starters for next year. I would hope that they'd bring in somebody to at least compete with him um, for that tackle job and to push him um, to where if he's not ready, then you don't have to play him. If he is ready, then he'll win the job. So that's kind of, kind of how I look at the tackle position. I agree. Tyree Adams will lock down, uh, presumably, the left tackle spot, and then you you go from there. Uh, capital And Tyree Adams was a top 100 player coming out Very of high good. school in New Orleans, so he was no slouch. Uh, capital City Tiger 21, Matty B, where do you play tennis? Hit him with the info. Oh, wow. Can I give him all my know. spots? I don't know. It's just <laughs> they can't get um, in anyways. <laughs> well, I don't private. play. I don't play a ton. I'm in private club. out here. I know, no, no. I don't. T- I don't play a ton at the country club, not unless I'm invited. Um, Bocage, Bocage. Yeah, that's about Bocage. That's again, if I'm invited, I'll show up. Um, I'll show up in I'll all show white. Up in the all whites. Uh, Highland Tennis Park, City City Park. Um. You know, there's some free courts around there you can play at that are that are nice enough. So you play the Kenilworth one? I've hit it. I play, I played at the Kenilworth one sometimes. I mean, it's they it's kind of a cracked, couple courts. Though. Yeah, they have two, and they're not they're not the best up uh, most up kept. So I, I not typically, but I'm definitely forgetting some. Um, I've played at the LSU courts a few times, the indoors and the outdoors. The indoors is very nice. Obviously, this is LSU. Um, so. Yeah, I know I know people that are members there, so that's been like ten dollars and get to play on the LSU courts. So that's all right. Well, just, give us a number one. If it's not Bocage, where which your LSU. number one spot? LSU. <laughs> LSU's the, the spot. I played on the outdoors and the indoors. The outdoors, it feels I don't know how to describe it, but it feels like you're at like a nice place when you're hot, when you're on the outdoor courts at LSU. It's very like the color pops off the the court. 
There you go. So that, that's that's um, the breakdown for you of all the coins. Well done, Maddie. Well done, Maddie B. Um, let's see where are we at. Go Tigers. I'm going to the wrong thing. Um, yeah, go Ti- go Tigers. Fifty two eighty. Uh, offense. The expectation coming in the season was Lacey was wide receiver one, Hilton was yep. wide receiver two, but with how Anderson's played, how can played can Hilton be wide receiver two? How does that rotation work? I don't think that the return of Hilton is going to eat into anything Anderson's doing. Uh, they aren't going to take him off the field. Yeah, I also yeah, I don't think they're the same position either, or used in the same capacity at all. Um, yeah, I was. The, the hard part is Hilton is we just haven't seen him this year. So we don't know how he's going to look even back in two weeks against Ole Miss. Uh, but yeah, like we said, I think he'll eat into Daniel snaps a lot more than Anderson or, or Lacey's like, I don't think. And and Brian Kelly talked about it with the secondary, but he kind of mentioned as like an overall point is all right, all this rotating we're doing, like this is not going to continue. This is we're going to lock our starters in. They're going to play a vast majority of snaps and we're going to roll Um, with Hilton back. We need to see, is he, you know, how does he look compared to CJ Daniels? How does he look compared to Kyle Parker? Who's been very good as well. And, you know, I think those three will start to rotate around at that other uh, boundary receiver role, but I, I can't see Anderson or Lacey really coming off the field very much. Defense, what did he ask? Uh, do you expect playing time to go up for Suggs and McKinley? Uh, they both look like they could benefit from it, uh, even if it's by committee. And it is a bit by committee right now. Yeah. Um, but we've talked we talked about that already. Both of them are getting, hit, let's call it an average of when healthy, 10 snaps a game. Do you want to see that go up um, at this tackle spot? Because right now, Ahmad Bro certainly is getting more than 10. Uh, if he continues at this rate, but mm-hmm. you have Suggs 11. I'm just talking about this past game, Matty B. Uh, Burrow 31, McKinley 17, Pias 28, um, Sean Washington 17. How do you want to see kind of what's your outlook there then? Yeah, I think Suggs should get more snaps for sure. I'm not sure what the holdup is with Suggs. Um, he seems to get the least amount of all of them beyond Sean Washington. Yeah, it's really, I mean, despite then being like super highly graded every yeah, time. and effective. Like you just watch his snaps, and he's was it the UCLA game where he had eight snaps and four pressures or something yeah, along those lines? Correct. Like it feels very, um, you know, it doesn't add up quite in that way. So I, I'm not sure what he has to do to get on the field more because I do think he is effective. Now he might be more of a pass rusher, which he is. He is more of a pass rusher than bro is while bro will eat up blocks in the run game. So they, they're different roles they're different players, but I would like to see more JVR Suggs overall. And I do think Dom McKinley, like I said, will continue to be in that around 15 snaps per game. Well, he has 35 snaps through two games. One of those is South Alabama and a blowout. So he played a lot, but um, yeah, I can see him in that 15 snap range it's going to be a rotation regardless let's see um coach k7 okay i'm actually looking at photos right now to see if i can find the answer to one of these the first one was did you guys figure out who the lsu defensive coaches are up in the box um no i completely i need to just ask i can get that answer and post it to the board um i don't know if it changes they or not but I, that's a good bye week thing. I'd kind of been curious and it got asked before. So I will find an answer. I'll post that to the board. This next question from Coach K7 is something I randomly thought about yesterday. So we knew that Harold. So now you not because of sign stealing all that, they let you eliminate it by the quarterback gets to wear a headset, you know, in his helmet. And Joe Sloan, the OC, gets to talk to him. It cuts off obviously before the play or whatever, but. On defense is the same. Well, they had Harold Perkins wearing it, and it was Blake Baker, the DC, kind of just telling Harold what to do on each play. With Harold out, who was wearing the green dot, I just assumed it was Greg Penn or presumed it was Greg Penn, um, your veteran, your starting top linebacker, and the guy who was already relaying calls in from the sidelines, and he had an excellent game. So I was like, I wonder if being in his ear took Penn and setting up the defense to another level. 
that I, but I couldn't remember who I didn't see. And even he said, I tried looking and couldn't find it. I'm looking at pictures of the game right now to see if I see any of great or a pin or weeks, but I don't know. And that is an interesting question because with Perkins out, someone else is the one directly communicating before every play with the DC. Yeah. I mean, you would, like you said, you would know better than mine and we can find out both of these. Um, but in general, I would assume pin maybe weeks get the green dot. I haven't had a big problem with communication on this defense at all. There haven't been a ton of busted coverages. Uh, most of their explosive plays have just been them not being good enough to this point. So I don't have a huge problem with it. I don't have anything really to add. I'm going to get an answer, but I bet it was Greg Penn. I'm looking at some of weeks right now, and I don't see one on him. Mm. Maybe it's Major Burns. So that's going to be my guess. You think it was Major Burns? No, I'm saying what it has. Who knows? Maybe it was Major Burns. Um, I don't know. I'll find an answer. Coach K, I'm sorry about that, but I will get you answers to both those. Uh, but he said, keep up the great job. Likes the new two new additions in Julie and Jarrett. So thank you very much for that. Um, let's do Hoko and then we'll get an ad read real quick. Yeah. Uh, Hoko, who's a better quarterback? Uh, my quarterback in our Matt College Football Dynasty or Peyton Thorne? Matty B? Um, I think he's struggling in our Mac Dynasty League, so I'll probably go Peyton Thorne. You're going Peyton Thorne. There you go. That's going to really hurt uh, Cap's feelings or Hoko's feelings there. Uh, Peyton Thorne, Auburn quarterback. Uh, Should have Auburn, been. Auburn message boards are melting too. If you yes, want to get on another three, one, just go over there and read about them being very upset with the quarterback debacle and Hugh Freeze. Uh, but he did say, will Trey Diaz be a more effective football or basketball player this year? I'll go football. Yes, football. He's he's not he's he's an afterthought in basketball right now, which is not a diss or a slight to his basketball ability. Uh, Matt McMahon even said in his press conference, he was like, I we're not even talking to him. It's like he's, Keon he's, Coleman he's, playing for Michigan State, really, right? Yeah, this is this it's is like very you're on much the team. You'll get in it because you love basketball. That was your first love. You'll play some garbage time for us, but his future is football. Yes, he's not worried about basketball right now. He's not going to play a ton in, in basketball. So um, football is the answer. I think he still gets involved. Same with Pimpton this year. Uh, Mason Taylor is just so good. And they found something in Aaron Anderson. So yes, uh, I do think they get those guys more involved, though. That's what um, I said. Sorry, to, before we get to that, read. That's what I yeah. said before the year. Everybody was like, man, you know, I really hope we get to all these 13 personnel. I was like, I kind of don't because i think i want this receiving core to be really really good and if this receiving core is really good it's gonna be hard to get three tight ends on the field at once like don't i i think people overestimate and i said this before i think people overestimate the impact of having three tight ends or a bunch of tight ends on the field here like if you have aaron anderson and xavier thomas and kyron lacy and other really good receivers like that alone changes the dynamic of how defenses have to guard. You don't overthink this uh, elite receivers are elite receivers, elite receivers for a reason. There you go. Um, all right, let's get Natter in. Yep. Uh, every uh, mailback is my perfect franchise. Uh, you guys know Andy Ludicky. He um, kind of has been the man with the plan uh, when it comes to uh, helping people out uh, when it comes to, uh, really on any front uh, of approaching uh, being an entrepreneur. Um, there's been multiple, uh, I can count beyond just people who have posted on the board, Matty B, uh, people that have said they've contacted Andy, that he's helped them set up, start some businesses, get involved in different stuff. Um, obviously, we've had a couple of testimonials on the board where uh, they've opened multiple things uh, through Andy. But let's see, do you have the number up right now? Let me get, I'm, I'm getting it because we changed stream yards. So I'm, I'm getting it right now. Here it is. Uh, there you go. You got it. Yep. <clears throat> Can you see it on the screen? There it is. 404-973-9901. Um, but Andy's done this for decades and decades. Uh, started out owning some franchises and then said, hey, look, I want to be a consultant and has helped thousands uh, of people. And when we caught up with Andy not too long ago, he was saying, look, this is kids coming out of college. This is people that are already retired. This is people who don't think, hey, I don't have the disposable income for this. He said there's so many misconceptions about who can get involved uh, in starting up a business, being in a partnership. 
Uh, and maybe it's, Hey, look, I want to quit my job. What else is out there? Um, and he said, that's almost half the business, uh, right there with people saying, Hey, look, I want to take control, be my own boss and, uh, and look for some sort of, uh, different path, or it could be a side hustle. So whatever it is, get in touch with Andy. It's Andy at my perfect franchise.net. Um, and the deal with, for Bengal tiger listeners, for LSU fans is his services are free. 100% all call him, talk to him about whatever, break down things, share your story, ask for advice. There is no, no cost, no, nothing, no kind of hidden fee or small print. Uh, Andy is a great dude who runs a awesome business and has helped out a lot of people uh, over in the Lone Star State into Louisiana and beyond. So again, do you want to diversify, build wealth? Maybe it's leaving a legacy onto your kids, uh, whatever it is as a franchise consultant, he's helped so many people um, to fit that skill set or financial requirement, maybe how much time you even have to commit to it or uh, whatever it is, uh, he'll help guide you through it. So uh, hit him up, Andy, A-N-D-Y at myperfectfranchise.net or 404-973-9901. There you go. All right. You want to keep it rocking? Yep. Um, Mr. Wise Guy, if you were to play one of the, uh, if you were to play one safety opposite Deshaun Spears, which one would it be? It seems like Spears and Gilbert. Uh, are the two best, but they both play the same position. Uh, <laughs> every podcast now, Spears a- is a true freshman and Gilbert is a veteran who's played a yeah. lot of SEC ball at Texas A&M and now at LSU. Yeah. I mean, every, every podcast we have a safety question. I come on saying the same thing. I it's, it's hard for me to, well, isn't the, isn't the hard thing too, that Jordan Allen's also a free safety. Yeah. I, I think there's not a good answer here because they don't, check enough boxes for me regardless so it's i mean if i was i don't i disagree with that spears is the best safety um i mean maybe he is but he's been underwhelming not underwhelming because he's a freshman so it's not underwhelming it's just like he's a freshman so i don't have the highest expectations um if i'm starting someone next i've said before if i'm starting someone next to spears i'm starting allen i just think he's the most sound um gilbert's made a couple plays so i don't want to dismiss him um we haven't really seen a ton of sage that much Sage played 47 snaps last week did he yeah he's just out there to me (laughs) um yeah i i don't have a great answer here i i'd go with i'd go with jordan allen probably you're yeah and well you mentioned spears and spears is young your two favorites are jordan allen and gilbert yeah those are those are my top two um again we haven't seen enough kylan jackson I would assume if he was significantly And he's really better. more of a star at this point, right? That's yeah. where his reps are behind Major he got, Burns. He got out there at the star against South Alabama. Major Burns obviously played the star. Toviano seems lost in the shuffle right now. So those are my top two. Spears will be will be better than all of them next year. Um, and maybe he is slightly better right now. I just think the, the margin is negligible. Uh, Harvard Tiger. Uh, I'll, I won't ask his fun question, Matty B. He's. Uh, oh, he's, they were he's... talking about. Um, what did I say? We were talking about Caleb Jackson. So I guess we can go off that. Caleb Jackson. I was just like, man, it's really overrated when everybody's talking about, man, Caleb Jackson had 30 pounds over the offseason, or 20 pounds, whatever it was. And now he's struggling. And not all of that's due to the weight. I think some I think of it's the, some vision there. Yeah, there's vision and there's intangibles in there as well. But it's just like. It's, it's just such an awesome. He said you're body shaming, and he yeah, said that yeah, that's what they were saying. Is that while I was you're in the mood, Caleb is Jackson. there a celebrity that you would like to see shed some pounds to meet your standards, Maddie B? I'll let you skip past I got that. Nothing. But you've been accused of body shaming, uh, one of the most physically we support Caleb Jackson looking right? players on LSU's team. Still support Caleb Jackson. All right, you're gonna get it around. I was just saying, people like talking about the the weight gains. Uh, he said, serious question. Uh, do you think Chris Hilton will be back for Ole Miss? Yes. I do too, but I really, I don't have any evidence to tell you that that will be a fact. Yeah, no. Or, or, I mean, or the whole, how, like, how many snaps? Probable week one thing, and we're still sitting here in week six? Yeah, if it's more significant than just a bone, bone bruise, which it seems like it is more significant than just a bone bruise, um, then even if he is – back to 90% or so 
it's still going to probably bother him like, on occasion. Like Brian Kelly said at some point, what was that, like in week two or three, he was like, you know, he's going to have to kind of play through some pain to a degree. But like Chris Hilton playing through pain is not something I like really want to see. So um, especially against Ole Miss in a game where you're going to have to score like 40 points probably. So how much does he play if he's even on the field? I don't know, 10, 15 snaps? 20 snaps? Somewhere around there? I'd... Like if I told yeah. you they have 70 snaps in this game. Yeah, that means you're having, uh, yeah, I don't know, somewhere in that range. And, uh, yeah. He's not playing half the snaps. No, he's not playing half the snaps. Like you feel and good about out of Parker town, and Daniel. Because and... it's his first time back out there. Yeah, it's it's been a really unfortunate season for him. The good the good thing for him is he he and Nuss have been working together as backups for a long time. So like, I don't think chemistry or timing is the issue. It's just getting him back healthy. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, just 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 man, I just needed to see him healthy. I just really feel bad for him right now. I think the bigger thing to watch is Caden Durham. Uh, as Hunt reported, um, it was two dislocated toes uh, that they popped back in for Caden. So. He was walking around the sideline in the second half fine. They weren't going to put him back out there, but I don't know history behind dislocated toes. Uh, Brian Kelly obviously knew what the injury was and said it shouldn't be a worry given it's a bye week and next week. So I doubt he sits, but he'll probably be playing through some pain. Uh, but yeah, you're in the middle of the season. I highly doubt there's many guys out there that feel great. Yeah. Um, okay, Tiger King 53. I like this one because of – debated on the board this morning based on what you've seen so far give me your top five sec teams uh on three maddie b did an sec power rankings today um let's just go one for one who's your favorite best team in the sec oh i thought you're gonna read off i because i didn't see the on three story no no i'll just tell you if it changes or if we match are you really thinking about this that long give me your number one team texas what you got bama yeah i'd put bama over texas uh, but that's think, okay. We'll go one, two. Okay. Uh, are, Bama. You gonna, are you, are you not putting Bama at two? I'll, I'll go Bama two. Okay. So, and I don't, I, I'm reluctant to put Texas at one, but okay. I still have questions about everybody, but go ahead. Uh, Bama beating Georgia was impressive. It was impressive. Um, and then taking the blow of them coming back and delivering the final knockout. It was impressive. Is championship right. level stuff. So, sure. uh, th- are we going to agree that George is three or do we want to put someone else there? I'm going with Georgia three. Yeah. I will too, but I'm very tempted to say Tennessee. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I'm good with Georgia three though. So we're going Tennessee and Georgia three, four. Yep. Tennessee at four. So the on three rankings have Oklahoma at five, LSU at six, Ole Miss at seven, uh, A&M at eight. Oh, okay. These I are would, power rankings though. These are power rankings. So, okay. I would put Oklahoma behind LSU and Ole Miss. Yeah, I'm not putting Oklahoma above either one. They they should have lost to Auburn first of all. Um, and I mean, I understand. Like, are, are we comfortable putting Oklahoma just clearly above Missouri? Like, I know Missouri's not great right now, but it's still they're a, undefeated. A um, look, if Missouri can beat A and M this weekend, that's a yes. very solid win. We'll they're not favored to win that game, and A and M's undefeated, and Missouri's undefeated, yeah. and A and M's working with a backup quarterback. Yeah. Um. I, I think LSU should be above Ole Miss like in the AP polls and stuff because LSU has a better win uh, on the road at South Carolina than anything Ole Miss has, clearly, and its loss is better. Now, I understand. That can change if this weekend they lose to – if they beat South Carolina yes. handily. But at this moment, LSU's loss is a seven-point game to USC on a neutral. Ole Miss lost at home to Kentucky. I mean, and I, Kentucky, I think, is actually a pretty good team. Like, I don't think they're bad. But at the same time, I think LSU should be above Ole Miss in most ranking situations. Um, so I, I have no problem with LSU at five. That is really, if you want to talk about just playoffs, and look, a 10-2 and two team in the SEC should get be getting into the playoffs is 12-team playoffs is what most people are yeah, kind of approaching this with. Yes, LSU, that would mean they can only lose one of the remaining seven games. We'll see if it happens or if it doesn't. But if they get, to, let's say they lose another, they win the rest, they get to 10 and 2. These are the group of teams you need to be paying attention to root to lose every weekend because 
your Bama's, your Georgia's, your Texas's are probably all going to play well enough all year to only carry a loss. Yeah. Or may and and maybe two uh in Georgia's sense. The Ole Miss, AM, Missouri grouping um yeah. of teams, um, uh, and then throw OU in there with LSU. Those are the ones that are going to have to battle to see who finishes 10 and 2 and gets in. Yeah. Also Notre Dame, because Notre Dame doesn't have a conference. Uh, yeah, I was just talking SEC. But no, yeah. no, yeah, but I'm saying because Notre Dame doesn't have a conference affiliation. So it's kind of like they're like a weird like <laughs> team you gotta always account for because they, they could, could go eleven and one somehow. With a loss yeah. to Northern Illinois. Lost to North at home. Terrible. Oh goodness gracious. Um long season ahead. Uh look, we, we get to enjoy it. People are already saying they're predicting wild stuff this weekend with I saw that that slate people you know you kind of sleep on the slate and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden teams are getting upset and LSU fans sit back and just enjoy uh you play no football um t- but then he asked what do you think for uh, LSU's record would be going into the Bama game <laughs> next three next three games are um Ole Miss or yeah Ole Miss at Arkansas at a and those are all three very tough games. It's more likely than not that they lose one of those games. Like no, I think it'll be, be two and one, one after those. Yeah. The most likely outcome here to me is two and one. And even if you say there should be favored or which I don't even know the Ole Miss spread anymore um, or the AM spread anymore. Like those are probably very tight lines. So um, and Arkansas well, is a tough out. Yeah, so more than likely, you're not going undefeated. If they go undefeated in that stretch, they're going to be a top seven team in the country at that point. And that Alabama game, you know, might not even matter, honestly, because you might be in the playoffs regardless. If you win these next three games, you're in the playoffs. I'll say that right now. Ooh, I don't know. Because man, you, you can lose to Bama, and then you're yeah, going to be. Still, then you have to beat OU. Then you have to beat. Florida, Vanderbilt, OU. I think. That stretch, that back three stretch, it's obviously significantly easier than this three. If you win these three games, LSU's in the playoffs. I'll say it right now. All right. So we'll go six and two. Going and they might be game. in the SEC championship game. If like they if, happen to be seven and one, Maddie B says playoffs. Yeah. Give me that. Give it to him. Uh, Hunter Fournette, Maddie B, if Bo Davis turns Bro into freshman All American, uh, will you name your first kid Bo? Bo, will you, and then his middle name be Peoples. Bo, Bo Peoples Bruni. Bo Kevin Bruni. Bo Kevin Bruni. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Bo Kevin Bruni. That's a wild name. BK? BKB? Bo Kevin would be the most like Southern name Bo, you could put that's Bo never Kelly. been done before that you could do. <laughs> Bo Kelly. Um, Bo, uh, Bro has been good. As 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 good as I I hoped he'd be. Um, my question was him. I thought the other defensive tackles on this roster would be better, honestly. Um, but he's stepped up to the plate, and obviously, and with Jacoby and Guillory going down, they've needed him, and he's been he's been good enough to this point. I don't think he's been great by any means, but he's been good enough. We'll see what Don McKinley can do uh, when he gets more snaps. And then he asked if Cade Phillips, uh, who I have a story up on Bengal Tiger today's. Uh one of their three corner commits, obviously DJ Pickett's a five-star number one corner in America, but on three S Cade Phillips ranked as the number seven corner. Uh, and I believe he's ranked 53 overall, regardless of position that's 200 spots higher than anybody else has him. Uh, but his question is, what is the chances he finishes top 40 moving up 13 spots? I will say more than 80%. K. Phillips is having a great senior year, and his athleticism is a reason he just keeps moving up, and he's not going to lose that. So I've been in the camp that I think LSU finishes with two top five corners in this class on on three, K. Phillips and DJ Pickett. So I'll go yeah, above 80%. Love it. I'm not on the rankings team, so don't don't shoot me for it, and don't get mad, Charles and Cody. I'm not speaking for y'all. Um, it's my opinion. It's all right. Uh, LSU Lawyer 24, where does college game day go the week of the Ole Miss game? There's Penn State, USC, Texas, OU, OSU, Oregon, which could be the big noon kickoff. Uh, and then there's Ole Miss, LSU. Texas, OU sounds intriguing. First SC, first year in the SEC and they play each other, they yeah. got to go to it. I was going to say, because it's not – Texas, OU is usually the big noon kickoff. Like the past few years, I think it's been that big noon kickoff game. Uh, on Fox. Uh, with, so, yeah, grab it up now while you can. First year in the SEC. 
Yeah, with the big noon kickoff, like I said, I think Ohio State, Oregon. Man, what a slate that is. Gosh, that is incredible. That is some incredible. That is an incredible football day right there. Um, yeah, either Texas OU or LSU, Ole Miss. I honestly, Ole Miss with that loss to Kentucky might have lost a yeah, lot. Yeah, it of makes it less appealing. I and even if Ole Miss wins this coming week, it's going to be what the number ten team or the number twelve, eleven team, something like that. Um, Texas OU has some juice with the number one C Texas or number two C Texas. And it being their first year in the SEC, I think that could be – that probably has more juice to it to me than Ole Miss OSU. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into our speed round here. Yep. Um, he also said, we saw the defense slow down Lincoln. Can they do the same to Kiffin uh, this game? Or is this game about which defense can get two oh, stops? Get two stops. God, no, I hope not, which was last year's game. Um, I think it'll take more stops than that. <clears throat> yeah, because I don't expect the offense to be perfect. Um, yeah, I think, look, I think Blake Baker can scheme up against a Kiffin or a Riley. We already saw yeah. it happen. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, think I don't think it's not going to be 55 49 like last no, year. It's it not, will not be. I, I, both <clears throat> teams, I don't think both teams get in the 40s. 30s, probably, but no, 40s is a whole nother world. Uh, Bourbon and Cheerios, um, obviously, long time listener, first time caller uh, here. Uh, if you were given the opportunity to call one play in the LSU Bama game this year, what do you call him? Inside zone. <laughs> just to just to read the you're message board. Aren't you? Just to read the message board. <laughs> I'm going Philly special. There you go, Philly special. Nussmeyer TD. I like it. Receiving Jared Goff style. That's my pick. You're going. That's your play. You're just running it. You're not you're <laughs> just running it or a wildcat. There you go. I'll call a wildcat play. How about that? With who? Xavion? Yeah. Xavion at quarterback. Sorry, Juwan. You'll get your time. But, but you Juwan was a quarterback in high school. Juwan so was a quarterback. I, I don't need the, the throwing element. You don't just want that. Me, just okay. give me Xavion Thomas getting the ball and running. I'm taking the throwing element, Philly special. Uh, uh, it's time to throw away all journalistic credibility. Guys, get reckless. In a segment, we're calling reckless speculation. <laughs> Who's more likely to transfer, Pimpton or Samson? I actually don't think either of them transfer. Um, I don't. I definitely Here's I don't think my Pimpton opinion. transfers at all. I don't think. I've either. I've asked about both. I don't think either of them are going to transfer. That could change in a few months, but right now, I would predict neither of them to transfer. There you go. Uh, wide receiver rooms wide open next year. Someone go get it too, Samson. Yes, uh, please. And same with tight end. If Mason Taylor goes pro, we'll see. Uh, three, do you believe in ghosts? I think we've got to ask that before. Yes, I do. No, I don't. You need to go stay in the Myrtles Plantation then. You ain't scared. Go up to the Felicianus, Matty B. <laughs> Send me the, text I'll, me those addresses. Yeah, I'll book you a room. We'll, we'll report uh, back or don't. Ghost hunters. And then we'll know what happened. There you go. Uh, Russell Tabo, dynamic duo there. Uh, with the new staff additions, rank the Bengal Tiger one to five. I'll put myself at five. Maddie B, you can have one and the rest can fill in. Yeah, the rest. Um, is out. He said, in the spirit of the 2019, what one player from the 2011 team would you add to this year's team to make it more difficult? But let's exclude Matthew or Claiborne from the run. Well, I want to choose Matthew. No, yeah, this team needs Matthew. <laughs> from the 2011 uh, team. Now you're making me think of... Who, well, the, I mean, I've got to pick a player on defense because that's the obvious feel here. Um, oh, yeah, I will yeah. go with – let me double-check to make sure that my years are correct here. I mean, hey, you throw Odell Beckham on this team. <laughs> oh, that is yeah. true. That's a or freshman a Odell, injury. though. Freshman Odell in 2011, though, so you don't get like – Or a Jarvis Landry. Prime. Yeah, freshman Odell and freshman Jarvis. Um, okay, let me see. I mean, um, I'll put Michael Brockers. <laughs> Eric Reed. Yeah, for sure. Okay, there you thousand go. percent. There you and go. then if not, I'm going Ron Brooks. The versatile Ron Brooks, because then he could play a couple positions, and I trust him. So, Eric Reed, be wrecking shop and at safety. So that'd be my choice. But back up Ron Ron Brooks, 
Big shout out. One of my favorites. Uh, LSD Tiger. Um, this is for you, Maddie B. Does this team end up in the top 10 in offense and top 60 in defense nationally? That was what you talked about before the year. Top 10 in offense is what you wanted to see. Um, scoring offense, defense, or SP+, plus, however you want to rank it. Matthew, you like to do SP+. Plus. He said it doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility after five games. Now, granted, you've got every game left as an SEC game now, but yeah. You they like are SP plus. What are you going to go with? 70. Where'd it go? Dang it. 73rd in yards per game allowed. Now, SP plus, for those of you, I, did, I tweeted it and post on the board. They're second in offense and 50. What was it? 58th, 55th in defense, somewhere around there. Um, which is actually, I need to go back and look at my story from the preseason because I think that's pretty spot on to where I was like, where they need to be. Um, if they're gonna, you know, if you have a top five offense, you can be in the fifties on defense and so on. So I think they've pretty much lived up to my expectation on both ends in terms of SB plus. Um, probably I'd have to go back and look at that story, but can they end up top 10 in offense? Yes. Yes. 16 defense seems workable. So yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it. It definitely could for sure. What a turnaround that would be from the defense of a year ago. Now, uh, now it gets free. Maximus 7918. He said, sorry if no recruiting questions. I will answer this one though. Go ahead. Uh, what do you make of Sloan offering a handful? He offered five 2027 20, quarterbacks all at the same time. Uh, this early on, much different approach from only offering basically three in that 2025 class, which is when Underwood committed. Is it's is this whoever wants in first gets the spot, or do you let evals play out? It's the latter. You let the evals play out. Uh, you would think at this point Haven would be his first choice with the amount Sloan's gone out to see him so far. I think Haven dominates it because he's got this early number one ranking and he's in Baton Rouge, so yep. he gets a lot of the pub. But all five guys that they offered, from Nussmeyer's little brother to Peyton Houston at Evangel, who's played great to start the year, to Trey Taylor uh, up in Illinois, uh, to Trent Seaborn uh, at Thompson, who's been starting since he was in eighth grade uh, for one of the better teams in Alabama. Sloan's been out to see those guys just as much as Haven. All of them have visited for unofficials. All of them threw at camp this summer. So all of these guys have been evaluated the same. I think the move was if you just offer one of them, does that put you out of it with everybody? And as noted, these guys are sophomores. So pick your group, offer them all at once, let your evals play out. I don't think that if any of them dialed up right now, who would they take? I, I don't have the answer to that. I don't think they'd turn away Haven. He's a local kid. But I also think that Sloan's been around long enough to know that those guys are quarterbacks and they're not in a position where they want to pop right now. They're exploring options. They're doing all that. So I think that's what it is. You found a group you liked you offer them, you let it play out because those kids are going to pick up and have been picking up offers from everybody else. So don't get into a spot where it's like, Oh, we offered too late or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, Kyler M. How much of Durham success is improved run blocking from the o OL? Uh, is it like a noticed improvement or is he just a playmaker? I'm not going to hate on the O line here. Discredit them. Kane Durham's just a playmaker. Yeah, he's, um, he's able to hit the crease in a way that Caleb and Josh are not. And, and the um, O-line didn't have to do anything on that pitch play to score from yeah. 72 yards. Yeah. Calls it two um, flats. He's just going to outrun everybody. The wide yeah. receiver. And you can tell, blocks. cause Josh had some creases too. And Josh made some plays um, in, in the South Alabama game, but it's a different feel when Caden Durham is running the ball. So yes, it is. I would credit more credit it more so to Caden Durham than I would the, the offensive line. The O-line is certainly improving in the run game blocking, but it is very evident that the more Caden Durham gets his shot, the more he produces. So, yeah, you'd say a little bit of both. I'd, I'd say a lot more of Caden on this one. Yeah. Um, five for five uh, asked uh, who scores the first TD versus Ole Miss. Um, and do we have any big plans for the bye week? I'll answer that one first. No. Well, we brought Julian Jarrett on. That was massive news. Yes, so we're going to be news. doing a lot of recruiting stuff, but. Uh, much like y'all, we will get our rest and then we will watch football this weekend. Uh, so unless you have different plans, Maddie B, what are you no. doing? I mean, Saturday is really the only day off this week. I, I kind of treat like Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly said in, uh, I think, Feinbaum, he was like, we're going to use the second bye week as our, our rest bye week. This is a grind bye week. So yeah, they're uh, practicing, I think, all the way through Wednesday uh, and then Thursday, maybe, and coaches go on the road to end the week. So yeah, uh, they are right back at it no rest yeah. for the weary 
Uh, who do you think scores first versus Ole Miss? Caden Durham. We got some TD props. Caden Durham? Caden Durham. He's, he's probably, probably on. He's probably a favored to do that. but uh, I'll, I'll go Kyron. Yeah. It's fair. I think Kyron comes out in this game and makes an immediate statement. My prediction. It's not a very bold one. He's scored in almost every game. Um, Shotgun Gibbs, new member as of today. Oh, and yes, he is. Just joined. Well, thank you very much, Shotgun Gibbs. Shout out to our man. And we're answering his question. Oh, yeah, it says right here. Yep, uh, right here. Kelly yep. mentioned uh, that it's time to play the guys that can win SEC games. Uh, so who's your start in secondary moving forward? Oh, um, coming out the gates with the question. Okay, so are we going with Gilbert and Jordan Allen at safety? You're, are you benching Sage Ryan in this hypothetical? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sage gets more will. reps than any of them. I like so. Sage. I, I shouldn't say that. I, I like Sage compared to I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Sage is a is is a fine player. I just would rather have Allen and Gilbert in the You're back. Not hating him because, hey, look, Sage is an LCA guy just like Allen. So it's yeah. Like no, it's it's you're just swapping in one LCA night for the other. <laughs> um the hard part is that star is if we think major. You just want to see Kyle and Jackson. Or I don't want to see major births. Um, yeah, I mean, some... uh, you, you can pick our star. You can pick the star, whoever. Major. Well, I mean, I'm, we can wish upon a star here. Uh, major Burns plays every snap there. Kyle and Jackson okay. barely plays. Yeah, Major so. Burns at the major star. Major starting. Uh, I want to see Zy Alexander healthy. I think that's the biggest piece to this Ole Miss game. Um, yeah. The Then Stamps. Yes. But what's kind of interesting is J.K. Johnson outreps P.J. Whittlin now. So For sure. they see something in J.K. Johnson that given that P.J. is a freshman, he's still <laughs> learning. I think in a game like this, you'll see much more J.K. Johnson than Woodland, even though Woodland's a Mississippi kid. Maybe he gets this is a motivation game for him. I don't know. I don't know. We we need we is it, need to so see the stamps, people stamps, that are... stamps, Zy Major, and then you say Gilbert now, and I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be Gilbert and Ryan is what we'll see. Yeah, probably, probably. Um, and I don't I don't mean to sound uh, so depressed about the defensive backfield. I just think it is still a major work in progress right now, and but I we already knew that concerns move. So yeah, we we get a lot of. I mean, heck, we you know spend a lot of our day on the message boards talking about this team and stuff. And it's just like, I get asked about the defensive back so much. It's like how much I'm happier can... that Sage is at his natural position than them still playing him at corner. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you give me the positives are there. I, I just, you know, still have questions. I need, I'm, I'm scared of this upcoming sec slate, you know, particularly Ole Miss. Um, and even though Arkansas and A&M are not past happy teams by any means, this is still going to be a, a tough stretch um, as we start things up. Um, uh, two more here, um, or three more, sorry. Bob yeah. Blay asked if, uh, the issues we have with the safety group are strictly talent or is it coaching? Talent. I think it's, I think it's, I mean, it's, just, it's a combination of talent and youth. Yes. And experience, talent and experience. You know, like you've got some veterans, but it was the same guys you've had and yeah. minus Jordan Gilbert. And then they're trying to play Deshaun Spears and these guys, but. They're young, so they'll make mistakes. DJ Woodland and Deshaun Spears yeah. and Kylan Jackson, so on and so forth. Um, I don't think coaching is an issue there at all. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, he's not trying to point blame. He said just that uh, Olsen's a first-year safeties coach, correct? Yes, but he's been coaching a, a while. And you've got Corey Raymond there as well. They know how to – I think these guys are well coached in the secondary. I think you, at the end of the day, sometimes – you're either just young or your talent is what it is. Uh, and you've just got to make plays and you hope that the good outweigh the bad. And we knew that going into this season because it was a lot of the same pieces. So it's, yeah. it hasn't been a major surprise. Uh, now two more J 87. Do you think we see more of Suggs playing uh, going forward? He was there. A uh, guy we talked about JBR Suggs D tackle transfer out of grand Valley state. Um, he has been very disruptive when he's out there. So Matty B, you did say you'd like to see more of him obviously moving forward. Yeah. I expect honestly that we see more of him because he's only at, he's averaging like less than 15 snaps per game. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, yeah, I think it was around 60, 62 snaps in five games. Like that's 12 a game. So I would hope he bumps up into that 15 to 20 range. 
uh, despite the fact that both of us uh, barely got our undergrad degrees, we're going to put on our MD tag here. He said, if Hilton is not able to practice this week and then becomes a game time decision next week, do you play him cold against Ole Miss? Why or why not? Can he run? That's the only question. <laughs> is he running 23 miles per hour? I, I Can mean, he run more than 20 miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, if he's running 20, Two miles per hour. Can um, cut. I can, can play he... him out there. Yeah, can he cut? Like, then yeah, I'm I'm playing him cold. If he's health, 100 healthy, and I don't need 100 all year. I don't need 100. percent Okay, five, 90. What 95 percent? 90 percent? If he's above, Again, if, if he can run, if, if whatever the percentage cutoff is, is that there's not a major risk of re-injury, then I'm I'm playing him. Yeah, I, I we, this. I'm not this playing offense, him the whole time, but I, I'm tossing him out there. Look and. He is not the answer to every ex- every problem with this offense in terms of explosiveness. Like I said, they're the second ranked offense in the country for a reason on SP Plus. They are a top five offense, no doubt. They are incredibly efficient. My my question is when you get into these games, you have to be able to hit the one play 50 yarders or the one play touchdown sometimes. Caden Durham gives you that. Um, even if Chris Hilton can't, you know, doesn't reflect that in the stats, I still think his impact in the explosive pass play is still going to be felt because I think he can put pressure on defense um, and open things up maybe for other people. So I, I would play him for sure, if, if no, no matter what. You want to know something I think is a bit interesting. Jackson Dart and Nussmeyer lead the SEC in pretty much everything, uh, yeah. completions, uh, percentage, yards, touchdowns, they've kept the picks low. Nuss had two bad ones last game, but relatively low. But their yards per attempt, I brought this up last week on the pod, are so different. Um, Jackson Dart came down a bit with that old Kentucky game. He's down to 12 yards, uh, and Nuss went up a little bit. Uh, he was at seven, now he's at eight. It may, I may be overthinking this because it might have only been a deep shot or two a game. But I think without Chris Hilton and without a true deep threat, Nuss had to buy in to this idea of I'm going to take what the defense gives me. And I think because of that, he's grown so much that sure. he didn't just think, oh, I'm going to go out there and just start deep. Like he averages seven, eight yards a completion. That's very, very middle of the very low. SEC. Mm hmm. And people would view that as a bad thing, but in LSU's case, it's actually a great thing. It's they sustain drives, they work the ball to different guys, they utilize the tight end, they do all these things to where they don't put the ball in harm's way a lot, and they still score. Yeah, so I, I think you laid it out well. Uh, the Ole Miss game will put pressure on them because Ole Miss should be able to score some points, so the offense will feel that pressure. So we'll see how they they respond. Uh, last one, Matty B, you can take it. What's the story with the LED light show? Uh, other stadiums, they turn the lights on and off and all that. It looks great. Curious if you all have an opinion on it. You think they're saving the whole, like, <sighs> so the Ole Miss game is the 100 years of Tiger Stadium celebration. Is that, mm-hmm. are we saving the light show for a nighttime game like that that wasn't Nichols or South Alabama? I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I've. You want to just I, see your. I was at, I hope they have something planned here because I, uh, last year I went to Alabama and they even have a closed press box and I wasn't even at the front of that press box and I could still see the entire field. Um, and it was incredible. Like that, the, their light show was incredible. After every touchdown, you watch the Georgia game, you watch the Alabama Georgia game, every touchdown Alabama scores whole light show. Like it is, I, I think, and I talked about it with some people in the press box you know, LSU keeps those ribbons on around the stadium, so that keeps like extra light in there, so the 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 lights from the light show don't fully pop. They need to shut all the lights off and just boom, just color, just straight yellow and purple light show. Make it fun because it's not popping right now at all. Um, it's very lackluster to me. But it's year one, and they're trying to figure it out. I'm sure, but just comparing it to Alabama, which is definitely unfair. Alabama's been good at this for a while now it's it has a long ways to go we'll see There's i'll tell you this opinion. it's already sold out and it, it will be packed oh it'll be awesome i'm not i'm not saying the atmosphere won't be awesome it was just that there's a rant on the light show because we got a question about it 
Okay, that's it. All right. You have anything more? Nine minutes, ten minutes over. Not bad. And, well, I'm, it was never going to be under an hour. I'm not possible. I can't do that. Everyone knows my timeliness is is a struggle for me, and I, and I try to work through it. That's okay. That's all right. We're here for you. We're here for you. Um, check out if you haven't already. I interviewed uh, Coach Redis from the women's basketball team. A uh, fun interview over there, about thirty minutes. If you haven't already checked out the uh, recruiting podcast on Monday. Um, so we got three straight days of podcasts coming yeah, out. Yeah, Billy and I broke down the whole class. We gave grades. We did yep. everything. So I just uh, and we even weighed in with Jakeem Stewart predictions. Five yep. star D so, lineman who could reclassify. So tune so in. There you go. There's three straight days, and then I'm I'm seeing if I can get a guest on um, a potential basketball American on this Thursday or Friday. So stay tuned for that as well. There's like thousands between men and women of all Americans. So it could be anybody <laughs> heavy hint. There you go. Heavy okay. hint y'all's way of who it could be. Um, but yeah, thank y'all for joining us. Uh, stay tuned to the Bengal tiger. Uh, like we talked about, we promoted in the beginning. Um, Julie and Jared are awesome additions. We look forward to adding them to what obviously Shay does, Billy does. And I do. So, um, we appreciate all the support. Subscribe over there. Interact with us on the message board. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions. We will talk to y'all later.